I would like to now move on to Ambassador Mateja Rodeb Gurush, uh, who is our ambas the ambassador in India of the Republic of Slovenia. She had a long association in, with India. I think it began in, 20, in 2016 or 17. And she's currently also the ambassador to Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, and the Maldives. In, in a sense, the whole SARC uh, a region that uh, um, Nirupama referred to. Uh, she, she, prior to this, she has worked as the advisor to the State Secretary of Multilateral Affairs and was the Minister Counselor in China, DPR Korea, Mongolia, Japan, Department for Africa, Middle East, e Asia, and Oceania at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Slovenia. She comes with a vast experience of having served as a diplomat across India, Japan, ASEAN, South and North Africa. My goodness, that's quite a, a, a range of experience. Um, and I think you're also representing a, a government today that has been very proactive in recruiting women into the cabinet, if I'm not wrong, a larger number than ever before uh, at the Republic uh, of Slovenia and a beautiful country with a very high GDP compared to the neighborhood that it is situated in. And we look to you, ma'am, to tell us about your own experience of not just a multicultural, <coughs> multilateral experience, but what skills that you bring to the space as a woman, which enables negotiations in, diff in different, different tracks, different contexts, different cultures, and what does it bode for us today to have a different vocabulary? Thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Rao, uh, Ambassador uh, Ganguly Das, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Minakshi. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today. Actually, my connection to India goes way back to 1997 oh, uh, when I met one Bengali. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, also when I entered foreign service, my first assignment was uh, South Asia desk. Um, and uh, I think on and off, uh, I was connected to India professionally uh, all the time. And it's my great pleasure to serve here as an ambassador. Uh, you are right. Uh, Slovenia, I think today is, um, has achieved quite an important gender uh, result. Uh, we have the highest number of women uh, parliament, uh, member of parliament. It's around 40%. We have a woman who is the president of the country. We have a woman who is the president of the parliament. And we have a woman who is the minister of foreign affairs. So we are very, very proud. And uh, you're right, uh, the uh, feminist foreign policy is right there at the center um, of, uh, of our diplomatic work. When I entered the foreign ministry in 1996, uh, the picture was not much different than Ambassador Rao described. Uh, even though the women's share was about 50%, uh, none of the managerial positions were in the hands of uh, women. We only had very few female ambassadors, I think around three, and gender equality was not part of our cross-cutting issues in the foreign policy. Today, I'm happy to say that we have very, very different picture, very different story. We have over 60 percent, uh, over 60 percent of our diplomats are female. Uh, at headquarters, uh, around 66 uh, percent. At our missions abroad, 53 percent. And this speaks a little bit about the challenges, which I'll speak later on. When we look at the leadership roles, managerial roles, uh, around 48% are uh, whole, uh, held by women. Uh, at the headquarters, 59%, and abroad, as ambassadors, are 39%. So we are still not at par, but we are marching toward that. Uh, ambassadors, when we look at ambassadors, uh, post around 37% of our diplomats are 
uh, females at headquarters 42 percent and abroad 32 percent. We are a small country, so I think all together we have a little bit over 50 uh, missions abroad, uh, around 85 positions, uh, ambassadorial positions, and out of this, uh, I think I counted 37, 38 at the moment are female ambassadors. But there was another qualitative step uh, forward, I would say. We also, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we have a coordinator for equal opportunities. And this is to promote women in managerial positions, uh, promote gender equality. We involve men, uh, our men colleague in this. And one important aspect is also family-friendly policies, to introduce family-friendly policies. Because in the world that we live today, women is still considered to be the mother uh, and take care. Uh, take care, uh, he, she has to take care of the family. So, so this was the first step. But then also uh, the next step which we did is that women and also children have become, have become very important cross-cutting issues in our uh, international development aid. So the projects were uh, granted based on what was the gender, as, gender aspect in it. And also at our multilateral activities, uh, peacekeeping, peace and security, human rights, this was all very much focused on women. So we still continue this, but recently, of course, with the world uh, changing, we also add uh, sustainable development. So the role of women in sustainable development and, uh, of course, economic empowerment. And as uh, uh, Ms. Menakshi already uh, mentioned, we are preparing feminist foreign policy strategy. It's in the making. And I just returned from Slovenia in January from our annual ambassadorial uh, uh, meeting. And the feminist uh, uh, feminist uh, policy is also going to be one of our foreign policy priorities. So we made uh, quite an important progress. But if you allow me, I'll just end up perhaps a little bit with uh, what are the opportunities and challenges that uh, as a woman diplomat I face. I think, of course, uh, opportunities are, are very um, evident. We are involved in policy making, in policy decisions, uh, policy shaping, uh, and of course, together with men, we are also driving the equal opportunities. Uh, I think one of the great opportunities, at least for me, is when I go for the posting to talk to women and girls in the countries that I serve in and to learn from them and to see their challenges, their problems, so I can uh, then respond uh, with the suggestion to the ministries what we should do. Uh, that, of course, are challenges still. I served in the countries uh, where it was difficult for my voice to be heard because I was a woman. Um, so I think uh, this is still a challenge in many countries today. I must tell you that I never ever felt that in India. Uh, I've, I've visited India many times already before and I never felt uh, being treated different, differently because I was a woman. But of course, uh, you should know that being a diplomat influences uh, the family a great deal. And I think women in that respect are still a bit at disadvantage today. Um, I think we need a very, very supportive partner, uh, which is not that easy in today's world because everybody wants to have career, right? So, and it's also, I think, when I see my female colleagues around, uh, to be very honest, uh, 
either they are single or they are divorced, and very few of them are happily married. So, you know, it's really, really important that you get a very good understanding partner. And I think one thing is also for the ministry to, to take this into consideration and to offer women a special support. In, uh, in our case, for example, you get many uh, ads on on your salary uh, if you are in a couplehood, right? But very few if you are a single mother, a single uh, diplomat. So in that, in that case, um, it's more difficult to, to be full-time uh, uh, very successful diplomat because it, uh, it's not uh, eight-hour job a day. It's uh, 24 hours, seven days. So I'll end with this, and if you have uh, more questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Ghosh, for bringing in that aspect of work-life balance and maybe unpaid labor for women, uh, even into the diplomatic space. And thank you for flagging that.